Starbuck also promised to increase taxes for the top 5%, but now he says this. We have got the highest tax burden since the war, mm -hmm. and therefore, you know, the scope for high tax increases is simply not there. Well, Why not stick to that pledge to increase uh, income tax for the top 5% of earners, who I, th I think you're suggesting could afford it, but also why not uh, reform capital gains tax so that it's the same rate as, as top-rate taxpayers currently pay on income? Well, just in... We've got the highest um, sort of tax burden for, well, since the Second World War, and therefore, I mean, what we've had from the government is tax rise upon tax rise upon tax rise. And I promised to, quote, abolish universal credit and end the Tories' cruel sanctions regime. That pledge is now off the table too, because speaking to the Centre for Social Justice in January, Shadow Work and Pensions Minister John Ashworth said, we actually agree with the concept behind universal credit which was to bring six different benefits together into a unified system of support. That is the right thing to have done. And on what Labour would do about benefit sanctions, he said this, I want to be clear, there will be a conditionality regime within the benefit system. Its welfare spokesperson, Jonathan Ashworth, called it heinous. Angela Rayner, the deputy leader, said the obscene and inhumane two-child cap must go. Keir Starmer, when he stood for the Labour leadership, said it had to go. One of multiple endless pledges that he made, which he has now reneged on. Um, if you have more than two children at the moment, you don't get benefits. Would that change under a Labour government? We're not changing that policy. You're not changing the two-child benefit, child, two child policy benefits. promised to promote peace and human rights. But just months after winning the leadership, Starmer whipped Labour to vote in favour of the Tories' Overseas Operations Bill. The bill, which has since been passed into law, makes British soldiers immune from prosecution for historic crimes, including human rights abuses. Com I'm sorry, but this is just wild. It is absolutely wild and ridiculous. It is one thing for a politician to lie. It's another thing for a politician to brazenly lie. Well, what they're brazenly lying about is a matter of public record because they're pretending they didn't say something, which we know they said because we can hear them saying it. A siege is appropriate, cutting off power, cutting off water. Well, I think that Israel does have that right. It is an ongoing situation. I was not saying that Israel had the right to cut off water, food, fuel or medicines. Uh, and yet, Are you kidding me? You're, you're really going to roll with that, are you? Care that you're going to keep arguing that's what you said when we can actually hear what you actually said. Oh my God. Ownership. Public services should be in public hands, not making profits for shareholders. Support can you guarantee that under your leadership, the 2019 Labour commitments to nationalise water, energy, rail, the Royal Mail, they'll all be in Labour's next election manifest? I've made that commitment. Simply I didn't make a commitment to nationalisation. I never made a commitment to nationalisation. Now, just to really drive this home, in the leadership campaign, he stuck his hand up when asked on national television on the issue specifically of nationalisation. First of all, raise your hands if you're into scrapping tuition fees. Yes, everyone. Renationalising water and electricity. Sector GPs, for an example, is an but, example. But, but your of pledge, that. you said end outsourcing and NHS. You, you've changed your mind. Yeah, well, look, the outsourcing of some issues and functions I don't think has been very effective. But if you take the NHS, the NHS has always used... Uh, GPs in private practice. That's always been part of it. For many, many years, the NHS has referred NHS um, you know, patients to the private sector to have operations, hip operations, knee operations, etc. I think we could be more effective at that. But I'm not talking about privatising the NHS. The pledge is literally on the screen, Keir. It's literally, it's literally there in giant letters next to you. Now, in the leadership election, Keir Starmer also pledged to end private sector outsourcing the NHS. But he's abandoned that promise as well, saying there will be more use of the private sector under Labour. He also promised to scrap tuition fees. Let's just, for example, hear what he said. But on this specific promise, it sounds very much like you are going to also to ditch your promise to scrap tuition fees. Um, there are things, good Labour things, that we would want to do, but because of the damage the Tories have done, we won't be able to do. Mealy mouth stuff. Mealy mouth stuff. 
he's scrapped it. I mean, he's not, then Labour's not going to put scrapping tuition fees in the next manifesto. It's as part of his pledge to defend migrants' rights, Starmer promised to, quote, defend free movement as we leave the EU. And in January 2020, he even doubled down and said Labour should argue for the return of free movement. But now he's changed his tune again. Here's what he said during that Radio 4 interview. I mean, there are very important pledges I made, um, the vast majority mm. of which stand. But some of them, well, you know, some of them, one of them was, for example, was free, uh, defend free movement as we leave the EU. Well, we've left the EU. We're in a different situation. So uh, that's clear. Defend free movement as we leave the EU just doesn't mean the same as defend it until we leave the EU. Supporting trade unions, again, in the election he went to picket lines and said it was important for politicians like him to be there and now he's banned Labour shadow ministers from doing so. Take a listen. I don't want Labour MPs on picket lines. It's really important you get politicians to come out and support you uh, and stand with you in this. So I'm very proud uh, to do that, to be with you this morning and to support you through this campaign. This city has been wounded by the media, the sun in this city, a hurt for this city. And I certainly won't be giving any interviews to the sun during the course of this campaign. Um, I'm very happy to work with the sun, to write for the sun, to do interviews with the sun. I haven't spoken to Jeremy Corbyn for two and a half years now. So Is he a friend? Was he a friend? No, I mean, I, as I say, I haven't spoken to him for two and a half years. In 2020, um, he was a friend. So he's a colleague, he's a friend, and he's led us through some really difficult times in the Labour Party. Because he wanted to stay in the European Medicines Agency, Mr Speaker, and said so four times from that dispatch box. Uh, the Prime Minister knows I've never said that uh, from this dispatch box or anywhere else. The European Medicines Agency and, of course, Europol, these are the bits of the EU which we which should be seeking to retain. Why would we want to be outside of the European Medicines Agency, which ensures all medicines in the EU are self, safe and effective? You can let me give three, uh, without the details. The European Aviation Safety Agency, which deals with safety. The European Medicines Agency and, of course, Europol, which I worked with for many years. What, this lot? The people who run the Labour Party? Democracy? Don't think they're particularly interested in that. I'll level with you. So what they did instead, guess what their clever strategy was? You ready? You, you guessed? Yeah, they just banned him. They just banned him from standing. They just made sure he's not on the shortlist. So members have no right whatsoever, no ability to decide whether they want him as their mayor. That's it. You're going to go for unity. You've got to inspire people to come together. You can't force them to come together. Uh -huh. And disciplining people to be united is going nowhere. So the only way in the end to unite the Labour Party is to be very clear that's what you want to do, to recognise there will be different views and to reconcile them, um, and to have a culture and a spirit where people genuinely want to pull together. If you're learning to the former Channel 4 News stalwart Michael Crick, who aligns his politics with the Labour right, he said it is increasingly clear that Labour's election processes are unfair and verge and corrupt, adding that favoured candidates were given membership lists long before others do, and so could start canvassing sooner. The reasons for blocking left-wing candidates who had a very clear shot at winning include, for example, one candidate who had incredible background in the union and in the, in, the, in the trade union movement and the Labour Party, uh, with reasons cited including liking a tweet by Nicola Sturgeon expressing relief at her negative COVID test and a picture of a man pretending to cry over Matt Hancock's resignation. These are the people running the Labour Party. Is it any wonder, as the evidence mounts, I mean, the evidence is there, it's overwhelming, it's just the media doesn't generally report on them for the reasons I've said, but already now, tw what's happened is, uh, if you look at Keir Starmer's ratings, his untrustworthy level, 45% of voters think that he is untrustworthy. That's gone up by five points in the space of, a, of uh, just under two months. Uh, trustworthy gone down by 6 to 27%. The guy is one of the most dishonest politicians in modern British political history. He stood as someone who championed, supposedly, radical transformative policies and party unity, and he ditched the lot. No party leader has stood on a platform which they have so comprehensively junked. There is nothing to be said in defence of this man's 
leadership in terms of honesty, integrity, being principled, having a clear vision. And the only people who are claiming otherwise are people who don't believe in anything themselves, who have no principles, and who treat politics as a football game where you just blindly cheerlead uh, whichever football team you've attached yourself to.